Today on Prof Huddle, the men's and women's soccer teams are dominating the NJAC this season, while the field hockey team's six-game winning streak will be put to the test this weekend against Kane. Volleyball's Prosco Pink Night was a success on and off the court, and we've got an exclusive interview with the men's head soccer coach, Scott Baker. Lots of exciting things to cover, so let's get ready to huddle. Welcome to another episode of Profs Huddle. I'm John Beavers. And I'm Carol Guno. Now, John, the Profs have been busy this past week, including the field hockey team who defeated the number three ranked Kane University 1-0 with a late goal on Saturday. That's right. The game was a defensive battle until the third quarter when Christina Hobel was in the left corner and passed it in to Bridget Guinan for the shot. Guinan's shot rebounded off the cage where Christina Hobel was waiting there to strike it in for the score. The props held out the rest of the game as they would be the only score. Kane drops to number four with this loss and the props move from the 12th rank to the sixth. The props will travel to Mawa, New Jersey this coming weekend where they will take on Ramapo College. The men's soccer team also clashed in an NJAC matchup last week when the Profs took on the NJCU Gothic Knights at home. Rowan dominated on the offensive end, but would that be enough to secure the victory? In the first half, things got pretty chippy quickly between the Profs and the Gothic Knights as yellow cards were handed out to each team. The Profs came out strong offensively in the first half. They took 10 shots, including a goal by Anthony Arena in the 36th minute. After a couple of rebounds, Ab Arena was able to control the ball and shoot a laser into the top left corner of the net for his first goal this season. Early in the second half, things got dicey once again as a red card would be given out to Maximo Vargas of the Gothic Knights. They played the rest of the game a man down and the Profs took advantage of that. The Profs were not done scoring yet as they would continue to attack the Gothic Knights defense and put up 13 more shots in the second half. In the 82nd minute, Jay Vandermark fed a nice ball to Chad Yates at center pitch as the shot deflected off of the goalie and into the bottom left-hand corner of the net for the score. Chad Yates also collected his first goal of the season as the Profs tallied 23 shots, 14 of which were on target. The Profs won the, by a final score of 2-0 against NJCU. They tied with William Patterson 2-2 on Saturday and will face Kane in Union for another key and Jeff matchup this Saturday. Special night for the women's volleyball team where on Saturday night, the Profs would host their Profs Go Pink Night at home against Rutgers North. Both teams wore pink to honor and support those who fight everyday battles against breast cancer. The battle that night, though, was between Rowan and Rutgers North volleyball teams. The Profs proceeded to dominate the game as they swept the Scarlet Raiders 3-0. All three sets were won with significant margins, 25-17, 25-17, and 25-15, with the stars of the show being Cassidy Abdallah with 12 kills and ace and a block, Brooke Adams with 34 assists and three aces, and Simone Sperano with 14 digs and three assists. The Profs will play at home against Rutgers Camden on Thursday at 7 p.m. Now let's take a look at the most recent game for the women's soccer team, where they faced William Patterson at home. Heading into halftime, the teams were tied 0-0. The Pioneers only got one shot off in the first half compared to the six shots the Profs took, jumping ahead to the 63rd minute. Aiden Sheehan set a ball ahead on the right side to freshman Jillian Jankowski, who weaved through the Pioneers' defense and shot off her left foot to connect with the back of the net. This made the score 1-0 in favor of the Profs. Skipping ahead in the later in the action, after the Pioneers were able to tie it up, the Profs were on the move with 10 minutes remaining, and after a foul just outside the box, Kelsey Stangle took the free kick and was able to find the perfectly placed midfielder and captain Jess Logan as she was able to blast it past the Pioneers goalkeeper and score her first goal since 2018. 
Let's hear from Logan herself and what went through her mind when she got, when she shot and scored. One of my teammates got fouled outside of the box, and um, when my teammate set up the ball, for the kick, um, I was I decided to like stand right in front of the net. Like my defender, I felt like didn't really follow me. And me and my teammate were just on the same team. She gave me a perfect pass, and I scored. Game winning goal for the props as they took the match by a t score of two to one. Speaking of soccer, both the men's and women's soccer teams have big weeks coming up. Let's send it over to Travis, who will take a deep dive into men's and women's soccer coverage for this week. That's right, Kara. We have a couple of big rivalry games coming up. The women's team is off to a 9-3 start this season and will protect their home field against Keene on Saturday. It's not often that a team leans on their freshmen to produce, but for Rowan, they've been getting the job done. Eight out of 13 goal scorers have been freshmen for the profs. In a match against NJCU earlier this month, there were a lot of highlight-worthy action. Jankowski netted her first career goal in the 10th minute on the ball that was crossed inside the box by Ariana Durling. Jankowski was able to settle the ball and connect in the back of the net. Then, in the 30th minute, Aiden Sheehan sent the ball inside the box, and when the goalkeeper for the Gothic Knights came out too far, Gabby Dean was able to capitalize and score for her first career goal, making the score 2-0. Then to start the second half, Samantha Flanders was tripped inside the box, and then Emma DeMaze was set to take the penalty kick. She shot it in the bottom left corner of the net and scored her third goal of the season. All have come on the penalty kick. The Profs would win the game 3 0, and all three goals were scored by freshmen who have been leading scorers for the Profs all season. Moving on to the men's team, they are 8 1 1 this season after they tied 2 2 with William Patterson on Saturday. With a couple of big games upcoming, I recently met with head coach Scott Baker after practice when we talked about what's gone right this season and what's to come. Rowan's men's soccer team has enjoyed a lot of success so far this season, starting the year 8-1-1. One, one. Our talent and our, uh, our commitment to winning. Um, the guys are putting the team first. Um, they have a team first mentality and, uh, and they're fighting together in uh, an important uh, and, and crucial part to the game and we're finding ways to win. Next up on Rowan's schedule, a big rivalry game against Stockton. The big rivalry games are the easier ones to get prepared from an uh, energy standpoint, from a focus standpoint. Um, our guys are going to be ready. Um, we're going we're to hit the field ready to go, um, full throttle. So the uh, big thing is just to play our game, uh, not get lost in the emotion of the game, which has happened in the past, and uh, just focus on uh, what we're trying to do in the game plan and, and put it together as best as we can. Speaking of the past, you've beat Stockton the last two times you played them. Is the game plan similar to what the game plan was those two games? Uh, well, it's, it's similar in our uh, basic, in our uh, general vision of, of what we want to do when we take the field. Uh, different in that we have a completely different team, different players, um, and we're going to be looking to do different things uh, to exploit them uh, with the personnel that we have. After a 2-2 tie to William Patterson, coach is asking for a more complete game on both sides of the ball. I think we've been relying on our ability to uh, to fight together in those crucial times and come up with a big plays to win. Um, but what we have to do is put the whole game together. Um, so that's one of the things that we've been working on is just to play a complete game, both sides of the ball, um, all the guys on the field at the same time, and then we, we feel we'll get better results. Leading the way for Rowan thus far, three sophomore studs, Will B. Alfred, Chad Yates, and Jay Vandermark. Yeah, they're all studs. I mean, they're all potential All-Americans, and, and they're doing their thing this year, and uh, we're excited to have them. Um, they, uh, they all did great their freshman year, and this is what we expected and hoped for, and uh, hopefully their best is, is yet to come for this year, and we're real excited to see what they do. Thanks, Coach Baker, for joining me. That rivalry game against Stockton should be a good one. And now back to you, John and Kara. The New Jersey Athletic Conference released its weekly awards, and it was a clean sweep for Rowan Field Hockey Team. The 12th-ranked team in the nation flexed its muscles this week, boasting a six-game win streak and improving the record to 8-2. and two. Christina Casanola, Abby Hainsworth, and Julia Campaccio earned all three NJAC Weekly Field Hockey Awards. 
Casagnola, the Offensive Player of the Week, scored the deciding goal in overtime as the Profs defeated TCNJ 1-0 last Thursday. The junior took 10 shots, dominating on the offensive side of the ball. She continued her dominance on Saturday in a 1-0 victory win over Kane. She helped control the midfield en route to a 19-6 shot advantage in favor of the Profs. Her experience and leadership proved too much for the Cougars. This is Castagnola's sixth weekly NJACT award of her career. Abby Hainsworth earned Defensive Player of the Week honors for her stellar performance in net this week. The sophomore goalie was a key factor in the Profs' consecutive shutouts of two top 25 teams. She made two saves in the overtime win against TCNJ. She had another three saves in the win over Kane. The Profs are currently holding a streak of three straight shutouts, in large part due to her performance. This is Hainsworth's first weekly award of her career. Julia Caviccio was the Rookie of the Week. The freshman midfielder played a big role in the shutouts this week. She helped limit TC and Day to just three shots and Kane to six. Caviccio even totaled two shots against TC and Jay. This is Caviccio's second Rookie of the Week award this year. Congratulations, ladies. Finish the season strong. Go Profs. Now let's look at the upcoming schedule for the Profs. Starting off with football, despite the 0-4 start for Rowan, they look to bounce back against Salisbury this weekend on Saturday at 1 p.m. The next weekend, the Profs will face off against William Patterson for the Profs' homecoming game. A heavy workload is yet to come for the 16-3 volleyball team here at Rowan. Glancing at the upcoming schedule, they will play Rutgers-Camden later this week, followed by a tri-match between Rowan, Dickinson, and Ursinus College on Saturday. On Tuesday, the 19th, the Profs will take on Ramapo College, followed by a quad matchup against Messiah, Suny Canton, and DeSalles. Taking a look at the field hockey upcoming schedule, they will face off tonight against Arcadia, followed by Ramapo College, in which they will travel to Mawa. Next week, they will play against Stockton in another key and jack matchup, followed by Salisbury next Saturday. To round out upcoming schedules for the Profs, let's take a look at the men's and women's soccer schedules. The men's team will face off against Stockton tonight. They will take on Kane Union in Union on Saturday, and the next weekend they return to the pitch to take on Montclair State. All three of those games are key and jack matchups. Taking a look at women's soccer schedule, they will face Stockton away tonight before returning to the field for two straight home games against Kane and Maine Fort Kent next weekend. The Profs will be away in Montclair taking on the Red Hawks in an end jack battle. That'll do it here for this episode of Prof's Huddle. I'm Kara Guno. And I'm John Beavers. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time when we get back in the huddle.